Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you my optimal gaming PC, how to choose ports for your computer and where to find the best prices. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you'll be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Having read lots of articles on the topic and having seen multiple reviews, we built a relatively inexpensive optimal computer for work and gaming. It will perform nicely in work tasks, video rendering, and it will play all the latest games with comfortable settings. Now let's select the parts based on how much we can spend, and today we go for the mid-budget rig. The first thing to decide on is the CPU. Today there are two large manufacturers, Intel and AMD, and we have to choose from these two brands. As long as the computer will be used for work and games alike, I choose an AMD processor. It edges ahead in video rendering, processing 3D graphics and everything else where multitasking matters. If you're going to build the computer for games only, it's worth choosing an Intel CPU, as their gaming performance is considerably higher. In my case, I know what tasks this computer will have to handle, so I'm choosing an AMD Ryzen 5 processor. This is not the latest model, but it has already earned a good reputation and is one of the market favorites. You'd ask me, why not the 2600 model? Because the 2000 series processors are just a bit accelerated versions of the previous generation, but they cost considerably more. The same Ryzen 2600 has only 2 or 300 MHz more to boost for the new price. After all, every Ryzen chip is unlocked, so they can be overclocked to compensate for the slightly lower frequency. In every other aspect, it is still the same 6-core 12-thread CPU with 16 MB cache and the 65W TDP thermal design power. Its specifications promise support for DDR4 memory up to 2666 MHz in dual-channel mode, but with optimized AGISA code, memory models will work without any issues at frequencies over 3200 MHz. Talking of the cooling system, when you overclock the CPU slightly to 3.7-3.8 GHz, the stock cooler AMD Race Spire will suffice. However, to be on the safest side possible, you can buy something better by Be Quiet or Deep Cool. The current prices start at about $180. My system will use an AM4 socket motherboard. The general advice is to look for products based on B350 or B450 chipset as they support overclocking and high-frequency system memory. In my case, the choice is an X370 chipset motherboard which supports the processor out of the box, so you don't need to update BIOS. It's also got good overclocking potential with radiators on the power elements, so this motherboard comes in handy because we're planning a bit of CPU overclocking in the nearest future. The Gigabyte AX370MDS3H motherboard is a well-balanced micro ATX product offered for AM4 processors at an affordable price. The manufacturer advertises this motherboard as a mid-range product with advanced functionality. It is meant for building high-performance home and office computers, and it can also become a good basis for an, for an inexpensive gaming rig, just what I need for the moderate price. It also offers some overclocking features, but due to using 6-phase CPU power supply, it is only good for moderate overclocking that doesn't suggest a great increase in heat output. This motherboard supports up to 64GB of DDR4 system memory at 2666 MHz and up to 3200MHz when overclocked. And there are 4 memory slots with XMP profile support. Uh, thanks to having an, an M2 slot with 32 gigabit per second and four set of ports with 6 gigabit per second, it is possible to create a high-performance storage system with an NVMe SSD drive as the system drive. 
It also has an integrated network controller Gigabit as a NetLAN and 8-channel audio chip Realtek ALC887 with an M and with improved analog output. There are 14 USB ports for peripheral devices, including 6 USB 3.1 Generation 1 ports. The current prices start at $85. Uh, now that we are finished with the motherboard, let's move on to system memory. Experience shows that six, uh, 16GB of system memory is enough for all modern games. That's why we choose the dual channel kit by Kingston HyperX Fury. Two DDR4 modules 8GB, each with a frequency of 3200MHz and the bandwidth of 25600MB per second. The average prices today start at $105. Of course, the cornerstone element of any gaming rig is the graphics card. For this computer, NVIDIA GeForce 1060 with 6GB of memory will be a good choice. Based on the numerous tests, reviews and budget considerations, we have chosen Inno 3D GeForce GTX 1060 equipped with twin X2 coolers and 6GB of GDR5 memory. This card uh, features memory frequency of 8000 MHz and base core frequency 1506 MHz that can be boosted up to 1708 MHz. With the memory bus, width of 192 bits, it can support the maximum resolution of 7680 by 4320. The card requires extra power supply and comes equipped with a 6-pin supplementary power connector. It also features all modern display connectors, two DVI ports, one display port and one HDMI. The current price starts from $300. When it comes to drives, it is recommended to combine an SSD with an HDD, which gives you good speed of the solid-state drive with sufficient and safe storage capacity of the conventional hard disk. We were lucky to save on the SSD, because we already had one by Samsung, a disk manufacturer with an excellent reputation. This is the model MZ70D256 for 256 GB. This SSD has very good specifications and is no match for traditional hard disks, as its read and write speeds are three times better. You can see all the details on the screen. Talking about newer Samsung drives, uh, have a closer look at Samsung 860 EVO series. This SSD has similar specifications. Or a Samsung 970 EVO series model with a PCI Express 3.0 interface, which boasts even higher read and write speeds. Now we need to power this build and put it into a suitable case. A good power supply unit means safer conditions for all other equipment, so don't try to skimp on your PSU, and remember that its capacity should be calculated with some reserve of 50 or 100 watts. In our case, the computer will be powered by Aerocool VX550 for 550 watts. It has a suitable motherboard connector for the product we have selected, 20 plus 4 pin, the CPU 4 plus 4 pin power connector and a 6 pin power connector for the graphics card. You can see maximum voltage specifications on the screen. This power supply unit comes pre-installed in the computer case Aerocool PGS QS180 Black, which is good enough to house all the parts we have chosen. This mini tower case lets you build a computer on a micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards and install a graphics card as long as 320mm and a CPU cooler as tall as 145mm. The bottom case panel has an extra opening for the air to cool the graphics card, and we have a dust filter here. With this case, you can install two 2.5 inch drives or one 3.5 inch drive and one 2.5 inch drive. And this case is also equipped with an 80 mm exhaust fan, but you can add 120 mm fans to the front panel and left side panel. For future overclocking, we will add more fans. And first of all, one intake fan into the front panel. The prices start from $50 for the PSU and $40 for the computer case. 
Now the entire set of parts set us back for about $800 without the drives. The next stage is to put all of these together, but that's another video. And that is all for now. I hope you liked the video in a new format. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!